All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hadi Femi Brits here again, and we're going to continue for where we left off. On our last episode, we've made some preparation for us to be able to send money. However, one more thing we want to do before we have to send the money, the endpoint already exists. And that's ensuring that our validation on the front end is also working. And ahead of time, I went back to the code to check that we have everything we need to be able to achieve this. So if you come back into our code, the favorite, I pulled up the store manager. And here we are able to undo Active User, or rather manage Active User. So with this, we have information about the Active User, which includes the user ID, which is what we need to verify that we are not trying to send one to ourselves. Then also remember that from our edited account, we have the privacy info to allow us to know that we are able to send money into the intended account. So with all that done, let's quickly undo this validation before we connect the endpoints we have on the back end. So let's get started. So coming back to the use send money hook. So under our verify account function, as soon as we verify the account, we also want to check if the active user is not the same thing as the account we are sending to, as well as if the currency we are trying to send is the same thing uh, with the account we verified. So here we check if rest, then we set the account verified, something like that. But before we even get there, we want to make those validation. So since the user is stored within our contest, we want to make use of that. So here we can get access to it. So const. So I get to get access to the states, but we have to define the use contest first. Then we have the store, like that. So from here, we are going to have access to the states. Then from the state, we are going to get access to the active user if we have it, like that. Okay, so it looks like there is an issue with uh, this. So let's take a look at our store provider. So we have the states and the dispatch, which makes sense. So what is the issue if it... So instead of actually going through those Azure, we have a use store hook we can use directly. So let's use that instead. So use store. And now we have access to the state as well as the active user. So we can remove all the stuff we are not using. Okay, cool. So now we have access to the active user and we can make that validation. So if rex docs user ID. So let's see if this actually exists to so verify the account. Yep, I can't see any information about user ID, but from what I can see when we log it within our within our network tab in our console, we could verify that there was a user information being sent. So let's do that and verify. So I'll copy this account, go to my network tab, try to send money. Okay, so as you can see, we have the user ID here. So let's add it to our type. So as we get intelligence for that. So on that verified account, I will add the user ID, which is going to be of type string to it. So cool. So now we can say rest dot user ID is equivalent to active user dot ID. So if this is the case, then we want to prompt the user that this is not possible. So I need to return a toast dot error. You cannot send money to yourself. So that's the first validation we want to break. Then the second one would be for the currency. So if res dot currency is not equivalent to the account dot currency, then we also send a toast currency mishmash. Okay. So that's the uh, so those are the validations I think we need to have before we actually send the money. And um, before we plug in the endpoint, let's see if this is actually working. 
So we'll come back here, we'll refresh, send money. Another thing I want to do is if we click out of this model, we close this um, whole thing. I don't want that to happen. I want it to be intentional close. And what I mean by intentional close is you have to click on the close button, making sure that you intentionally want to close it. So before I go ahead to test um, that, let's also do this first. So we'll come back to our quote. So here is our dialogue. We can control that by how uh, it's open. So we have the open. So we're going to define a state for it to manage the model states. So we have some states already. So let's just add one. So const model states, then set model states, which is going to be use states by default is false. Okay. So now open equals to modal states. Now, how do we trigger the open states? So we can use the button info here, or we can use the on click here. So I believe this as an on click. So set modal states equals to true. So the issue now with this is the unclose icon is controlled by the dialog. We don't have access to it here. So yeah, we'll come back to that later on, but let's first off how much we're able to pull up the model and see that we can close it by clicking out of the model. So we'll refresh once more, send money. So we'll click out, we can't, however, we we'll are able to open up the model. So we need to implement this. So let's find out where the close icon is and see if we can kind of target it. So if I go to the dialog contents, that's responsible for showing the UI. So as you can see, I've modified this dialog content uh, in the past to undo the custom close, so close icon and all those things. So custom close, we have this. It's a function, so which means we can send a custom close params here. And I'll just define a close function um, to allow us receptance when we close this up. So plus model. So I'll copy this, come back here, create the function, for list. Close model. So before we close our model, we want to set some, um, or rather we want to reset some stuff. So as you can see, these are the things we want to do. So we want to set model state to be false. We want to set data info to this. And we want to set accounts to be null. Do we have a state for set verified account? Yeah, we do. So we can also set that to be null. All right, that's all we have to do. Let's test this if it's working. So we come back to our browser, can click this, and that closes the model. So we refresh once more. So if we select an account, I will close the model then it closes it up. All right, that's the thing. Let's now perform the operation in regards to our validation. So we are going to be using the USD account. So check. So we have this. So in this two scenario, we are going to get that validation error as you can't send money to yourself because that's the only thing we can buy, we can bypass for now. We are trying to send money to ourselves. However, if we try to create another account, then we'll be able to see that. Actually, let's go ahead and create a new account. So a lot of this, I would click on sign up. So for this, I'm going to have um, account one at thingbreaks.com, then password, enter my password. Okay, so user created successfully, account one at fingrates that from there we add the password. All right, so we have new accounts. However, as you can see, we have an issue since it still recognizes the old account, so we have to resolve that. So we click on account, even though account is not found, it's still recognizing this as a different breach. So when we log out, we are good, that can happen. However, when we are logging in back, we want to reset things. So let's come back to our code. Yep. 
So within our hot hot phone, here is where we log in. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, we didn't log in here. This is just the hot phone. And here is the sign in. So what we need to fix is the active user state. So here we're going to make use of the use store. So we have costs. Use store. Like that. Then here we want to get the dispatch. So dispatch. So once we are logged in with, and we try to navigate to the other pages, we want to reset the active user. So dispatch update user. So we have action type. Action types dot update user. Then the payload for this can be null, I believe. So the payload for this will be null. So we're going to get the active user later on. That's meant to happen automatically due to the fact that our paths are wrapped within a protected route. So let me show you that. So if we come back to the apps, so as you can see, everything that are protected are wrapped with this components. And if we check through it, we'll see that it tries to get the active user. So that allows us to get the active user. So let's come back to our browser. So we are logged out. Let's log in with Adafem Bridge first. Cool. So we have Adafem Bridge, which makes sense. Let's log out and log in with account one. So now, because the user has been resetted, we have to specify the username for this. So I've got this account one, or rather, since it's the username, it doesn't have to, it should not have a space. All right, let's update this and see what happens. So now we have account one and if we access the accounting, we don't have any account here. And if you are wondering, all the transaction history we have are just dummies, so ignore those. But because we want to test our sending of money, let's add an account to account one. So we are going to add both accounts as well. So ng and submit. So we have the ng then account created. So let's do for the USD as well. And voila, we have the USD account created as well. So if I try to send money, there's another validation we can also make in this aspect to validate if we have enough uh, amount. But I won't bother about that. So I will leave that to our backend. We can decide to do that if we want. So I'm going to open a new tab to access the Adafemi Great account. So Nuka hosts 5,000 and what's out theory. So Adafemi Great, my password. Try the font in groups weird for some reason. Okay, now it's back. So I'll copy this account and try to send money to a dollar instead. So I'm going to put this here. So as you can see, the validation we get this time around is the currency mismatch, which makes sense. So it's able to validate that the account is different because we are a different user. However, the currency is not the same. So let's do this. And now we get this information. So here we're able to establish that we want to send money to adifemi.fingrids.com or rather adifemi as fingrid.com. So those boots, we try to send 2000 or so, we have that information. So let's see if we've spent a lot of time. Yep. So even though I promised that we are next to kind of plug in our sending API, I don't want to bombard us with too much information. I want it to be slow and steady, but then not slow and steady, but at least have adequate information once we need it. So as a result of that, I'm going to round up in this episode. We're going to have the next one in the next few days. And then we'll finally see sending money in action. So again, I'm going to use the opportunity to solicit for our support. If we've not subscribed, let's ensure we do that to assist me in establishing more um, connection on the channel and to spread the old gospel. That'll be all. Bye for now.